In today's show, we're talking about the hot topic on everyone's lips right now, AI in marketing, and specifically how AI might affect you as a social media marketer. Welcome to JFDI with the two Lauras. This is the podcast for freelance marketers. So if you are a freelancer providing any sort of marketing services, you are in the right place. Now, before we dive in today, Em has left us a lovely review about the podcast, which we wanted to share with you. She said, I love this podcast. The two Lauras give practical, actionable advice. And most importantly, if you're worried about any aspect of your business, they give you the boost you need. Don't waste time trying to figure things out for yourself. Listen to people who know how to run a business and understand social media marketing. That, thank you. <laughs> this review made our day. <laughs> so don't forget that you can leave us a review wherever you're listening. We love to read them. They really make us smile. And who knows, we might read yours out on a future episode. Okay, so let's dive on in. <laughs> So we, as you know, have been working in marketing for a long, long time. And there are constant changes throughout that time, some big, some small. And in fact, social media marketing changes so often that we have a dedicated Telegram channel in our membership, the Inner Hub, just to keep our members informed anytime anything important changes on social media. So as you can imagine, it can be a pretty busy channel. Now, One of the biggest changes we've seen is the introduction to algorithms and AI. So in this week's episode, we are diving into the wacky world of artificial intelligence and how it might affect you in your marketing role. We're going to talk about AI replacing freelancers, about how you can use AI to save time. And of course, we are also going to dive into that chat GPT. What kind of AI podcast would this be if we weren't talking about that? (laughs) So over the last few months, we've seen hundreds of these kinds of posts, haven't we? Posts asking how AI will affect marketers. And particularly in the last few weeks before we've been recording this, that messaging has gone nuts. Yeah, Like you only have to open Twitter and somebody's asking is AI going to take over my job? And there's just posts everywhere (laughs) talking about this new technology. And the biggest question on every marketer's lips seems to be like, should we be using AI? So before we kind of start this podcast, I want to challenge one view that appears to be quite widely held. Now, you might not have this view if you're listening, but this seems to be the view out there on social right now. And that view is that AI is new. But AI is not new. No. It's not a new thing, is it? Like, we've been using AI for, for ages. Yeah, and I don't think people realise how much AI is part of our day-to-day life. And actually, no. if you stop and think about it, it's everywhere. So, like, for example, my house, my family is organised with thanks to AI, with that being the lovely Alexa. I'm going to have to... Oh, God, I hope that didn't just set off everyone's Alexas. (laughs) I know. And the same with Siri. I don't use that as much, but the principle's still the same. You're using that applied AI. So also, if you use any kind of GPS in your car, that is power. I was going to say TomTom then. Like how old is TomTom? That's like a blast from the past. (laughs) Anything like that is powered by AI to let you know where you're going, if there's any issues in the traffic, on the roads, etc., There's also, for a lot of you who manage ads, you're using machine learning AI. So that is part of your day-to-day working life. Um, If you've ever used Google Translate or transcribed a video, like using tools like rev.com, etc., then guess what? That is also AI. And if you've ever let Facebook automatically create the alt text for your image, Guess what? That is also... No, that's not AI, is it? (laughs) That that is also AI. Can we just point out, though, that that is really rubbish AI? (laughs) Yeah, it's not not AI at its best, is it? Um, But yeah, so that just explains how we are using it both personally and professionally all the time. And, Mm. And that might be obvious for some people, 
But for some of us, I think we have to remind ourselves how much that plays a part in our day to day life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's definitely it's not, new. not new, is it? Yeah. <laughs> No, it's definitely not. It's just new. the hot it's, topic, isn't it? Like yeah. it's just that thing that seems to be on everyone's lips right now. Yeah, it, but it's not new. And let's just say that AI right now is very powerful, but it will get better. There is mm. absolutely no doubt about that. How you use it will change dramatically. I think that in itself is what has created it to be a hot topic. Yeah, is that I think people know it can get better, and I think there's a fear of how Mm. good it can be. And I think that fear, that emotion is what is generating the the conversations. Yeah. And I think it's going to get better quickly, Mm. probably within the next six months, at least sometime this year, we're going to see big changes in how people are using AI. So, you know, you are right to be, for it to be a hot topic, you are right to be paying attention to it. Don't be scared by it though, because it's been in our lives for ages. Mm. Let's look at how AI impacts you as a freelance social media marketer and how you can actually use AI to your advantage. Okay, I think the first thing we need to cover here is the thing that everybody is worried about. And let's just reassure you that AI is not going to be a replacement for a human right now. Probably not in the next few years, at least. Your job is safe. And on the flip side of that, and this may be disappointing to some people, you might think, oh, AI is going to be brilliant. It means I'm going to be able to automate everything and I can just put my feet up or just go and sit in the, on the beach and have some sangria. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not really the case either. It's not going to replace you whilst you go and you know sit on your yacht. But it will help you. It will help you to save time. It will make some of your jobs easier. It will give you ideas. So it will definitely make your job easier. It just won't replace you. And one yep. of the questions that we had, we, we asked um, in our Facebook group, group what people wanted to know about AI. And one person asked us, which one is best? And I just wanted to kind of dive into that a bit, because if you don't know much about AI, that might be a question that you're thinking. You might be thinking, well, which AI is the best one for me to use? We're not going to answer that, that question on this podcast, because that is an impossible question to answer. That would be like you saying to me, what's the best ingredient? Well, it, it depends what you're making. Are you making a cake or are you making a roast dinner? Like, what is it you're making? And it's the same with AI. The AI is the tech behind whatever tool it is that you're using. So it's what is the best tool for whatever job it is you want to do. And the AI is the thing that's behind that, that's powering it. It depends on what you want to achieve. Okay, so you mentioned before about how AI is something that's going to be able to hopefully save us time Now, and obviously we'll all be reassured that this isn't going to replace us as humans and our job, but let's just spend a bit of time looking more specifically at how it can actually save us time. Because let's face it, we all want to save time. Oh, we all want more time in our day, for sure. So AI can take over some of the jobs that kind that maybe the jobs that take you ages or for me specifically, the jobs that kind of make your brain feel like it's on fire. So for example, you could use AI to analyze big amounts of data and AI could then help you to identify patterns or trends that might not be immediately apparent to you as a human, and especially not to me, because as we all know, I hate data. So AI can really help you with that sort of thing. And then once you've done that, you could then use AI to get recommendations or insights based on that data to help you make more informed decisions far quicker. So a good example of that in action is Facebook ads. If you have been in Ads Manager lately, and you, I know, obviously were in there recently doing our ads, you've probably seen that it will make recommendations to you based on the machine learning. And as humans, we can be very quick to brush off those recommendations and think, no, I don't trust Facebook. I'm not going to listen to that. And you and I do that all the time. (laughs) Yes. But we do that all the time. But AI now is very different than it was three years ago. So those recommendations three or five years ago in Facebook were pretty pants. They're getting better and they're only going to get more and more better. That isn't very good English, but they're only going to get better. So (laughs) we should start ignoring those less. 
those recommendations we should be paying attention to and testing those. And yeah, they might not be right, but we should definitely be listening to them. And also, if you think about AI, AI can, and particularly going back to Facebook ads, it will help you to show your ads to the people who are interested in whatever it is that you're doing. So it can show you what your audience is interested in. If you've got two different types of copy, particularly, then it will show you like what's working well. It can um, put your ads in front of the right people at the right time on the right platform, all of that stuff. And it will help you to understand what content is performing best. There's loads of things that you can use it for in terms of saving time that way and making your job easier. Yeah, there's, and which, there's tons which more. Ma- Do you want more? <laughs> <laughs> well, many of people, it's worth pointing out, many people, you're already doing this. So yeah, exactly. You're already having time taken off your mm. your day, your weeks by using this. And you you, you may have forgotten that <laughs> this is all yeah. already happening and this is already making your lives a lot easier. Mm. Like, you know, I've been doing ads a long, long time and it's, well, I wouldn't say it's easier because it, it's not. It always has different challenges. But things like that do make the job a lot easier. So AI is helping us already. Okay, so uh, what else? How else can we save some time? Um, right. So if you are, for example, doing organic marketing, you could mm-hmm. use AI for social listening. You should be doing social listening anyway. Um, but that can save you tons of time. So and we all know well, was, how important social listening is, right? Yeah, I was going to say this should you should be using this already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the tools out there that can make this easier for you, like so, tools for example, like Sprinkler or Brandwatch or Agora Pulse, can all help you with social listening and make it quicker mm. and easier. By the way, we love Agora Pulse. Um, if you want two months free with Agora Pulse, go to the two lauras.com forward slash Agora Pulse um, and go and try it out. Their social listening is really good. You could also automate different tasks with AI. And some people are going to love this, by the way. Did you know that you can use AI for automating tasks like lead generation and customer service, whether that's for your own business or for clients? Now, this is a game changer in terms of time. Mm. But it also, if you're working with clients, can make you look really good. (laughs) So, (laughs) So we... And you you may well have already seen this on our, our Instagram. We use this a lot. We use... Um, chatbots in our Instagram. We use a tool called ManyChat, which by the way, is a brilliant tool. If you manage Facebook or Instagram for clients, we would highly recommend that you go and check out ManyChat because you can add this as a service and it's brilliant. So what ManyChat is, is an AI powered chatbot that you can automate to have conversations in Instagram or Facebook DMs. And it can also respond on posts. And it's really clever because the chatbot can start conversations when people comment on your posts. So you could set it up so that it's when they comment with anything on your post or when they say Mm. a specific word. So we use it mainly for giving out our freebies or to get people to uh, listen to our podcast so we can share the link with them or to invite people into our Facebook group. So we'll say, often say in a post to use a keyword in the comments and that will start the many chat bot, which will start a conversation in the DMs. Um, and it will then send them the link. If, by the way, if you want to see how this works, go and see it in action. Go over to our Instagram and just comment on any post saying join or send us a DM saying join, J-O-I-N, join, and you'll see this fire. And this is a brilliant way to kind of automate a lot of things and start those conversations. But you can use chatbots for like lead generation because you can collect people's email addresses that way. But you can also use it to handle other queries and requests from customers. So if you are managing a really busy account that gets tons of questions, particularly if they're always the same questions, or you get tons of customer services requests, then AI can really help with that. Mm. But it's not going to replace you because you need to program it in the first place. You need to build the chatbot. And then you are going to need to monitor it because it's not going to be able to answer absolutely every question. There will still be things that you're going to need to to handle manually and have those human conversations. Yeah, I've used this in the past with some of my clients, not many chat, just the bots within Messenger chat. Mm. So if someone messages, they're able, you're able to get the information you need from them. So then when you log on and go and work on that client's account, you've got the information to hand to then be able to pass it over to their sales team or or whatever it may be without having to go back to that customer and say oh could you just clarify 
which project you're interested in or what, whatever the question mm. is. So you're able to get all, all that information is being gathered while you're asleep or doing whatever you're doing. So then when you come to, to do that work, you've got all the information you need. So it streamlines a lot of that process for you as, you know, social media marketers. Um, and that just makes it so much easier. It makes you look good to a client because you're yeah. quick and got all the information you need. And so they can be really, really useful for us, but they definitely obviously don't replace this because the amount of time someone will have asked a separate question and I'll still have to respond to that. Yeah. Or like with many chat, if our if we've got one keyword that's firing off the bot and they put the keyword and an emoji without space, the bot doesn't fire. So yeah, you still yeah. have to kind of keep your eye on it so that the people who haven't managed to get what they wanted, you can still give it to them. Manually, yeah. Mm. Okay. So the big question on everyone's lips is like we've just touched on, like can it actually replace us as content creating machines that we are no should we end the podcast (laughs) no the answer is no um look let's just be clear there's always going to be someone out there who says that yes it will and there will always be some business out there who will try and reduce their costs by trying ai but then they will realize that a human is better. But there will also always be someone out there who is cheaper than you and is another human. So it can't replace you, but it may provide cheaper alternatives to people who are uneducated in that it can't replace you. Yeah. So, you know, you just have to make sure that the people you're working with understand that, I suppose. And I do think there will be people who will try and replace Mm. humans by using AI. Yeah. And there will be brands, there will be tools who will use that in their marketing and they will say, replace your social media manager with this £27 a month tool. Yeah. That is the messaging that they will use because it's good messaging. Yeah. So, and we as marketers just have to ignore all of that noise and remember that, yeah. that there will never be a machine that can do a job better in terms of marketing to humans because humans understand humans and robots don't really. So no, but good news, it can help you to create content, which I'm sure will be music to your ears, particularly yours. (laughs) Definitely mine. (laughs) So go on, tell me more. Okay. Well, first of all, like, let's just remind you, it can't replace you. It can't replace an experienced marketer, but it can help you to create content. Especially if you're like, if you're looking at words, for example, and you want to write captions, sometimes if you're looking at a blank screen, you need a starting point. If mm. you are thinking, oh my God, what on earth image do I need? Sometimes you just need some words on a screen that tell you the image that you need, right? But also sometimes you can spend hours looking for an image, for example, in Canva, and <laughs> there is no image that, that gives you exactly what you want. Are you talking to me again now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you probably don't know this. Did you know that Canva has now got an AI image generator? You're taking the pee. I'm not. You're going to love this. So when I was sat in Canva yesterday for hours and <laughs> yeah, I didn't produced hardly anything, you could have told me. I could have told you that, but it wouldn't have been so good on a podcast. <laughs> Thanks. So, Thanks, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> that's right. You can, go and, you can go and try it after. So <laughs> this AI tool in Canva, it's relatively new and you can just describe an image to it that you want and it will create it. Now, I don't want you to get too excited though and go and open Canva right now <laughs> because it is not brilliant. Okay, oh. I've tested it a few times. It's, like, it's okay. Talk about the, dangling a carrot. <laughs> I know. The images look good. They look like they're photos, but they're not specifically accurate. There's not, they're, you know, they're not great. They're never going to replace a photo of whatever it is you were looking for a photo of, but it is worth trying. If you want to try it, by the way, if you go to Canva and when you're in a new design, go to the app section, you'll see it in there. Um, So just describe whatever it is that you want on the photo, but be really specific. Um, So for example, I was, and this is a really random photo that I was looking for, but I wanted a photo of somebody drawing a triangle on a whiteboard. And so I said, give me a photo of somebody drawing a triangle on a whiteboard. The response was really terrible. So then I had to explain it more. And I I literally said, I want to see the back of the person. I don't want to see their face. I want it to be a woman. I want the whiteboard to be on the wall. I want the triangle to be in black ink. And I I had to really explain it that way. But still, the results were not great. I suspect they will get better, Mm. but currently not. That's so interesting. Lots of... um 
Canva AI photos will now be appearing on our Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they won't. They won't. <laughs> so with that big reveal about Canva, should we talk about the thing that everyone wants to talk about? The thing that they're listening to this podcast for? The thing that you were harping on at me for the last month over Christmas festivities. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. If you have missed the rollout of chat GPT and everybody talking about it, where on earth have you been? Because I would quite like to go there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so let's talk about chat GPT. Everyone has been talking about this recently. In fact, mm. this was so popular recently that every time that I went on, the server was down because it was at capacity. Yeah, well, I had that this week. Yeah. Over Christmas, I could get on and ask it anything I wanted. And this week... <laughs> Do you know I've what it reminds me of? Wait. Clubhouse. That's what happened with Clubhouse, wasn't it? Was everyone suddenly went on it. So maybe that's not a good sign for GPT That was in this future. time of year as well, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, yeah. 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 So chat GPT <laughs> is... It's a chat bot, basically. You can ask it anything and what have you. And it will give you some really good responses, which we'll go into in a minute. At the time of recording this, chat GPT is free. Whether it will stay free is unclear. I don't think it will probably remain free for very long because there's so many people on it. It's, you know, it's so monetizable. So mm. whether you have to pay for it or whether it will have ads on it, I don't know. But I can't imagine that they won't try and monetize it. But it is amazingly good scary it's scary good. Yeah, yeah it's scary how good it is yeah if you haven't tried it just go and google and type in chat gpt and go and try it it will blow your mind <laughs> so how it works is that you can ask it a question and it will provide you a written response about pretty much anything so if i was going to try and describe chat gpt to somebody who had no idea what i was talking about I would say, imagine you had a dinner party and around your table, you had Stephen Hawking, you had Einstein and you had Google and you could ask it anything. That, that is what ChatGPT is. It would, give, it would know the answer. It would be like, it's like right at your fingertips. But what a dinner party a that would be. I know, can you imagine? <laughs> it's not a replacement for you though. So that is good news because guess what? It's just a robot. It's not yeah. going to replace you. Okay, so I have played around with it and I've got, like if I've asked it kind of basic questions, I've got, okay answers but if I've asked it anything more complex I'm not getting like I'm not blown away by what I'm getting back so what okay what is it that you need to be doing to get these amazing responses that people are harping on about on Twitter okay so first of all don't ask it a basic question oh. um, so if you are <laughs> ask it you know give me an idea for a blog you're not going to get very many, very good response. But oh yeah, also, mine weren't that wanna, basic. No, but you, <laughs> but also you, you said that you, you were quite, you, if you made it more complex, you don't want to make it complex. You want to just be specific. So you need to really describe what it is you want. So if you did want, for example, a blog um, or a social post, you would literally explain what it is that you want. And the more you explain, the more descriptive you are, and the more in depth, the more useful the answers will be. You will still have to do a load of editing because it is a robot, it's not a magician. And I wouldn't, by any stretch of the imagination, recommend that you use chat GPT or any AI tool to completely write any of your marketing content. But it can be a good way as like a starting block. But there's no human touch there. So in order to get good responses, you need to be really clear about what it is you want to generate even as far as telling it the tone of voice that you want it in. So I, for example, wrote, well, I didn't write it. I had chat GPT write us an email this week that we sent out. In fact, let me just find the prompt that I gave it. So the prompt that I gave chat GPT, and this was the first prompt. Okay. After that, I gave it, you know, more information. I said to it, can you please write me a funny, uh, by the way, I said, please, because obviously, even though it's a robot, I need to be polite. So I said, can you please write me a funny email to freelance social media managers about using AI in marketing, make it tongue in cheek, but add in some useful tips and make sure it's not too long and not boring. And it gave me a pretty decent response, mm. but I did go back and ask for more. And then I did edit it very slightly. I didn't edit it loads because I specifically wanted that email to sound like it had been written by a robot because we were talking about AI. But did you see what I did there? I gave it much more context. I told it the tone of voice I wanted and all of that sort of stuff. I told it who I was writing it for. And I just went into much more detail. 
So similar to what you were saying about Canva in that yeah. you can't just say, I want uh, someone drawing a triangle on the wall. You have to be more specific yeah, about exactly. what it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so if you were doing a blog, for example, you might say, make sure it includes examples of how people do this or make sure you tell me about best practices or things to avoid. Um, give me the title, give me the headline, give me the meta description, make sure it's SEOable. And then you can use all of that information to obviously go ahead. Or you can then go back and say, great, can you rewrite or give me more detail on this particular point and add in some, some specific examples on that point? So the more specific you are and the more you then ask it to edit itself, the better. But it's, it's not going to be perfect. Don't try and just use chat GPT or any other AI tool. Um, you still are going to need to do some stuff. And also... I don't think a lot of people realise this, but chat GPT is a language based AI machine. So don't ask it to do anything in terms of like maths or data or anything like that, because it can't deliver on that. It's all about language. Yeah, so that's and disappointing because I was yeah, thinking but there oh, this are is, other things out there. This, this can help with the kids homework. I'll just stick to Alexa. Oh. God, could you imagine? Oh my God, <laughs> people are totally going to be doing their homework on this. To be fair, Alexa is great, but I did think when when we were talking about it over Christmas that how, like how are universities going to deal with this and schools where they have to write essays? And I know this kind of stuff's been around for ages. And even when I was at university, you could pay someone else to literally write them. So you know, this kind of cheating is has always been around. But there will be ways where if you have your AI write an essay, the tutor would be able to plug that essay into another AI and say, is this plagiarised? So. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. You know, yeah. I'm sure we could get around it that way. Okay, I'll, I'll let the kids know. <laughs> yeah, tell them. <laughs> tell them Alexa is going to be checking your homework. It's, it's original. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The amount of times people Alexas are going to be pinging off after this uh, podcast. I mean, people need to listen to headphones. Go and ask Alexa what you should be putting on your socials today. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. Okay, I'll do that and then we'll see that on Instagram later. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's do, just do some examples then of how you could use a tool like chat. GPT if you're a social media manager. The first one is that, like I said earlier, you can use it to kind of clear that brain freeze when you can't think of anything to write. You could ask it for post ideas. But again, the more specific you are, the better. So for example, I asked ChatGPT last night to give me content ideas for mums of under ones who are interested in potty training advice on Instagram. And it gave me some all right ideas. I know it's very random. Why it gave me some all right ideas. Did you because I just couldn't, I couldn't that? think of anything and I'd been talking to one of my friends. <laughs> there we go. I know, random. Uh, this is how my brain works. But anyway, <laughs> back to the ideas. It gave me some ideas. Were they groundbreaking? No. But they were a good starting point. So if I'd have had brain freeze and I had no idea of what content to create for mums of under ones who were interested in potty training, which by the way, I have no idea then that would have been a really good starting off point to give me some ideas to get going with. But that was as far as it went. Like it couldn't give me the real marketing stuff. But I think that's still good though, isn't it? That's still oh, helpful, you know, yeah. the, the amount of times we sit there and, you know, think, right, what shall I post about today? Or, you know, that mm. can, it can help, can't it? It can just give you yeah, that and if you're, um, start. if you're starting with a new business in a new sector that you know nothing about, brilliant. You can also use chat GPT or other AI things to give examples for small pieces of your content. So, for example, if you needed some ideas for calls to action, you could say you could give it the copy. So this is what I've written. Give me some ideas of a call to action to end this post off and it will give you some good ones. And actually, some of them were really good that I asked it for. So oh, it's nice. worth trying things like that as well. So the process my brain went through when when I started playing around with this, I keep wanting to call it chat something at any chat gpt is if i first of all i was like oh my god this is amazing oh my god the opportunities oh my god this is really clever to then going through this thinking of hang on a minute where are they getting this information from where is this intelligence intelligence sourced from how can we be kind of comfortable and confident that where it's been sourced from is kind of ethical and where you want it to be sourced from and accurate and correct and all of this. And so I started to think, actually, can we trust this? Is it is it trustworthy? Um, yeah, so that's where I'm kind of at now. 
Can we trust it, Laura Moore? I think it depends on what you're trusting it with. So like yeah, you okay. just said, can you trust the information? Would you trust the information if you'd have Googled and had a website that had a blog with the information you're looking for? Would you have trusted that information? Uh, you would have still made your own decision as to whether or not that was a reputable source of information. Yeah. So some things, yes, I think you probably can. Other things you can't. And you said to me yesterday, but it doesn't give you a source. So mm. I actually went on ChatGPT. I asked it a complicated question. Can't remember what it was. And then I said, please provide me the source. And it gave me the source so I could then go and look at that source. And then it's up to me to decide whether or not I trust that source. So should we trust it? I think it depends on what you're trusting it with. When it comes to content creation, no, I wouldn't trust it fully. I would remember mm. that everybody is using these tools. And so you can't trust that it's going to be unique. You can't trust that it's going to have your own brand voice and it doesn't sound like anybody else. You can't necessarily trust that it's accurate. So chat GPT, for example, the information that's plugged into that only goes up to the end of 2021. So chat GPT still thinks that the queen is alive. I know. It that's... lives in a very different world than us. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Surely everyone knows she's dead. I know. I would have thought everyone knew that. So no, the information isn't always accurate. And also it's not necessarily an unbiased source of, of information. So you still need to make sure that you're doing your own research. Yeah. So due diligence is, is key. I was going to say that, but I can't say it. So I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 I can't say it, so I'm not going to. Um, yeah, do that. <laughs> Uh, when, you, when you are when you're using it and just think like as a marketer you want to create unique content especially like in terms of an seo perspective for example um on all social platforms and including like just normal seo you need unique content and you need to make sure that it's different from anyone else which ai won't give you and mm. i was reading recently that a lot of seo experts say that google can spot ai generated content I don't know enough about that to know if that's true. But if that is true, perhaps in the future, social media algorithms will also spot AI generated content. We don't know. So just remember that it's a starting off point. It's not the be all and the end, end all, result, is it? Exactly, exactly. But also just one other thing that I want to say about um, can you trust AI? It, in terms of like the information and everything, I think that's a whole different topic. But I want to make sure that people are all aware of their own personal security with AI mm. when it comes to the data that you're giving away. Because let's be very clear, you are giving your own data away with some of these AI tools. Now, a few weeks ago over Christmas, I saw loads of people who were using AI to generate photos of themselves. They, you might have seen they those. They still are. They still are. I just find it a weird concept. Take no, photos and, of yourself. And me. I don't get <laughs> I find it. it strange. But it's weird. So what they're doing is they're uploading tons of selfies into this tool, this app, and then it kicks out a load of AI generated photos. But I can guarantee that 99% of those people have not checked who owns the data that they're putting into that app. And the data is your face. So you don't know what's going to happen with it. You don't know how they're storing it or what they're going to do with it. And you need to remember that your voice, your face, your likeness, all of that is very important data for you like you wouldn't share your pin number with somebody you wouldn't share your fingerprint with someone without checking out who they were why they needed it so we should be questioning ai tools when we are sharing anything that's about our likeness and yes photos of us are available all over the internet already but it's different when you are specifically giving them to a machine learning tool your fingerprints are all over the world as well Anywhere you visit, anything you touch, you're going to leave your fingerprint. But you would think before you plugged that into an AI machine. Yeah. So you need to think before you plug your voice or your face or anything like that in as well. Um, so just be aware of that and just think about, you know, how are they storing it? How long are they storing it for? And what are they doing with it? Yeah, that's good advice. And I think the other point to, we all need to be aware of is if you're using AI in your content creation, whatever that may be, you need to be honest about that. You need to mm. be transparent. You shouldn't be using AI and then trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. I think people need to just be transparent about it and be honest. Um, yeah, not try and trick people. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. Okay, so... 
It's been a full on podcast. So let's just, <laughs> let's just round it up. So I want your top three tips for using AI that people can kind of take away with them today. Okay. My first tip would be go and try it out for yourself. You don't need to know exactly how it works or all of that stuff. Um, and, but just test it. It doesn't mean you have to use whatever it generates, but just go and try it. Go and look at ChatGPT, for example. Go and use the AI in Canva. Go and use whatever else you can get your hands on and just try it and see what happens. You're not going to break anything. Just try it out. But obviously be careful with what you're doing and what data you're giving it. My second tip would be to think about how you can use AI for the things that you either can't do or you don't want to do. So, for example, collecting that complex data and using it to inform you. I think that would be my second tip, thinking about it, about it that way. And then my third tip would be mindful about the information that you're giving away and how they're going to store it. I think it's also important to just say that AI is a really complicated topic, but AI is like the power behind the tools that we are going to use as marketers. We don't need to understand how AI works. We don't need to, like, I don't understand how code works on websites, for Christ's sake. So I'm never going to understand AI. I don't understand the Facebook algorithm. I don't, I don't, but I don't need to understand all of that stuff. What we just need to know is what do we want to achieve? What tools are out there that can help us? Are they powered by AI or not? Um, you know, which ones are we going to use? And just keep it as simple as that. Just simplify everything, I think. Yeah, I will live by that. Like, I don't know how Alexa works, do you? No, I assume there's a little lady <laughs> sat inside there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You ask it a question, she then hops on the bus, comes to my house for me to ask it a question, yeah? Yeah, yeah. She's just sat <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Now you know. Okay, so I hope that has been useful. I know there's been lots and lots of questions within our communities about uh, AI and specifically, obviously, chat GPT. So I hope it was useful. It's certainly a hot topic. We're happy to continue having the conversation. So do come and join us in our free Facebook group, the Social Media Managers Hub. Uh, we'll pop the link in the show notes. And don't forget that you can use our, our chatbot, our AI powered chatbot yeah. to get that link. Just go on Instagram and send us a message or comment on any of our posts saying join. And yeah, we'll see you in there. See you in the group. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.